Welcome back to the Kirby Create Podcast. I am Derek Kirby, and today we will be delving into mental health and a little bit of, I guess, self-development as well as we talk with a good friend of mine uh, who happens to be a certified holistic life coach. I have that correct, correct? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, this is Lindy Putnam, and uh, we will be looking into some of this, sharing some of our kind of own experiences with it, as well as our growth as we've kind of gotten I guess, to, to the other side of, you know, our own struggles and everything. But Lindy, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm good. This is, this is fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's been an interesting thing so far. I think this is my fifth episode of doing this, but I think the interviews so far have been really interesting. Um, a mix of, I, I had one guest earlier, I think it was episode two with James, who is another YouTuber I've worked with a lot. And, you know, we talked actually about mental health because he wanted to talk about it, which was kind of interesting. So love it. Yeah, it was a, a, a very open and honest conversation, but it was uh, it was pretty enlightening and pretty cool as well. And then I've had other guests on who wanted to talk, you know, a little bit about like their background and then kind of swerved into like just standard sports talk, which I'm totally cool with. Obviously, yeah. I'm very equipped for that, but it's uh, I, I like the the structure to it, how it just kind of feels like conversations and it's like, Hey, we will go as deep as you want. But other than that, but yeah. So, uh, I guess how long have you been, uh, a certified life coach now? Yeah. So I've been a life coach for two years, a little over two years. Um, but self-development, my passion for self-development goes back until I was like when I was little, Um, My degree is actually in counseling psychology, and um, really, I've always been drawn to self-development, personal development books, is because growing up, I was very shy, and I had a lot of anxiety around my shyness, which in turn made me more shy, and it was like a revolving door, right? Mm -hmm. But I was very lucky that my dad was a counselor and an avid reader and had tons of self-development books that he would just hand down to me at an early age. And I loved the concept of, you know, you can build confidence. Confidence is something that you build. And so that gave me hope when I was little, even though I was really shy, I was like, okay, if I can figure out a way to build my confidence, build my self-esteem, then, you know, I, I kind of held myself back when I was little from setting big goals or doing things I really wanted to because of my shyness. And so Mm -hmm. that was hope. Like if I can build my self-esteem, build my confidence, then I can, you know, hopefully one day get to where I can do the things I want to do to feel free to pursue my passions and, and, you know, and being a life coach was actually one of them later on. I, once I kind of figured out my niche, like how, what worked for me, then I realized this is a powerful transformation. And that's what I want to help others with too, because there's nothing, there's nothing more freeing than to live life on your own terms, to be comfortable in your skin Mm -hmm. and to really do, do what you desire. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I I think we are kind of birds of a feather in that regard, because I definitely grew up as a very quiet introverted uh kid and like if i if i knew a person i could be as goofy and ridiculous as anyone but if i didn't know a person i could barely string together a conversation like of any kind even if they were asking me the questions i would be like shit what's my name again like what what are we doing here (laughs) like yeah oh no i said my name awkwardly like i i had a weird like stutter in my own name how does that make sense like (laughs) just dumb little things like that and uh you know it's I I had areas where, like you said, I I was able to kind of develop and grow confidence. A lot of that for me, that outlet was like basketball. I played basketball my entire life and from sixth grade and pretty much through high school, it was a year round thing. And so a lot of that became, I think my kind of identity as far as not just an outlet for me, as far as like self-care, if I was stressed, I would just go play uh, or, you know, just something I could kind of do and not have to interact a whole lot with it was just kind of like a a skill and an outlet in that regard for me and so after high school when I didn't have that anymore I kind of had to Mm. figure out what to do like I didn't immediately go to college I had gone through a uh, basically one of those two-year tech programs to get into web development and 
I kind of just went right out into the, the job world and I didn't really have a lot of confidence in that regard. And I kind of just skated through, like, again, I, I had the people around me who I knew and was comfortable with and that I could interact with and that was fine, but I really stayed just kind of reserved to myself. And so I think a lot of that just kind of led to stunted development. Like I wasn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to push boundaries or grow at all. And just as I got older, I kind of realized like, you know, I really got to do something about this because I'm not, I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I'm in a rut where I'm not going anywhere. And it's not just my career. It's, it's like, personally, I don't feel like I'm going anywhere. And that that's frustrating. If it's like a weird emptiness, it's hard to explain. Yeah. But, yeah, I, yeah. I totally get that. And that's why, you know, it's so important different coaches will focus on different things. And that's why I like holistic life coaching, because some coaches will only focus on the external, like external achievements, but it's so important that you do both, that you focus on outward growth, taking those steps, you know, those tangible steps, but also inward growth, like to be fulfilled within, no matter what you do externally, mm -hmm. it starts from within. Like my <clears throat> firm belief is real transformation starts from within. And so that's why as with a holistic approach, you set big goals, but then you focus on the inward transformation as well. And that's really what, what gets you the long lasting results that so many people desire, because I also played uh, golf at a collegiate level. And, you know, golf is one of those things where, you know, it's, it is just you, like mm -hmm. the pressure is on you. And so, you know, even though I did pretty good with golf, I always found that how I was feeling internally also dictated how I played that day. If I was really nervous, if I didn't trust what I was doing, I wouldn't play as good. And so mm -hmm. that also sparked like an inward process with me too. Cause I said, I, I need to figure out ways to get over my nerves, to be confident, and once when I really worked on that in college too, my, my golf game, all things in my external life improved as well. Right. So it's yeah. that inside out transformation. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It, it felt like in my experience, anytime I was aware that I was not in the right mindset or something, and I tried to like go under the hood, I would, I would do more damage than good as far as like, you know, sometimes as an athlete, you get in your head too much. And now you, it's yeah. like you have, uh, what's that term for like the yips, like suddenly you yes. can't do like yeah. the basic stuff. And that's, that definitely happened to me a few times where I was like, oh man, I haven't been shooting very well lately. And then all of a sudden it's like my muscles forget how to shoot a basketball. And I'm like, okay, I've been doing this like my entire life. Why does this suddenly feel like I'm shooting left-handed instead? You know? Yeah. And uh, that, that definitely, that definitely was something that I, I struggled with at times. So I, I tried to just like, I tried to find like, there's different terms for it, like the zone or the flow state yeah. or something like that. I tried to find that and just shift into that mode where it's almost like I tried to turn off my mind as much as I could. And so like, I didn't even really take note of like the other players around me so much. I tried to just zero in as much as I could. And sometimes that worked, sometimes it didn't. But it, it was at least a way for me to, you know, obviously basketball, you got nine other players on the court with you, but it was a way to try and make it where it's like, okay, just focus as if it's just me and just like out there shooting on the hoop or something in the evening, like I do all the time. But Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's so powerful. You know, so, so many people, one thing when I do work with clients on like goal setting, um, you know, we get, we are who gets in our own way. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, like one of the first things I work with clients on is taking ownership over your life, over all things in your life. That's your mindset, your actions, your thoughts that you choose to listen to. Um, so many people think that if they think a thought, then they identify with it. It's true. Right. But really, we think millions of thoughts every day, and a lot of them don't serve us or don't make sense. But when you get a thought and then you, you really identify and attach to it, that's when you can get in trouble because, um, you know, really, it's all about like, I love how you say that awareness behind your thoughts, behind your mental state. When you kind of just become an observer of your thoughts and don't really mm -hmm. identify them, 
then you you're able to take the thoughts that serve you and then move forward and focus on that it's so important to focus on things that serve us and then just let go of the stuff that doesn't like by taking that ownership it puts the power back in your hands to say okay this is my responsibility my happiness how i think how i choose to respond to situations the bucks the buck stops with you right Mm -hmm. so by taking that i'm going to choose to focus on this and move forward that's that's one of the most powerful mindset shifts I think anyone can have. Yeah. And you know, that's, so the whole self-improvement thing for me, as far as finally feeling like it, it turned a corner really only happened within the last three months, maybe um, mm-hmm. that, that was something where for me, a major, like you, you even said the phrase, like a major turning point for me was realizing that I was the thing in my way. Like I didn't yeah. really realize that before, even before my mindset, I hadn't even realized how negative against my own self I had become, not just in like double speak or things like that. Like I even unintentionally said it earlier when I was talking about uh, stammering or something, if I was nervous and I said, well, that was dumb. Well, that's negative speak against myself. For yeah. reason. And so like, there's things like that that I'm still working on, yeah. but there, there were all these things where. I was really bad about moving goalposts if I did accomplish something. Like, mm. if, even if I got, like, in, uh, in school, if I got straight A's, well, then it must not have been that difficult. Or, like, oh, well, you know, okay, that's what I'm expected to do. Why should I, why should I celebrate that? Why should I treat that like that's any kind of milestone? Previous times I lost weight uh, trying to get healthier and all that again. First of all, there was a double side to that, but I'll, I'll get into that in a second. But I would say like, okay, this is my goal. And then I would get to that goal really quickly because once I lock in on something, I'm obsessed with it. And that's, yeah, really that's awesome. So I would reach that goal and then I'd be like, oh, wow, I got here fast. All right, now I want this. And then I get to that goal. All right, now let's get to this. And eventually you move yeah. the goalpost so far that it finally is out of reach. And rather than taking note and celebrating all of the accomplishments I had along the way, I fixated on that end post that I couldn't reach. And I let that like eat at me. And I Mm -hmm. I can't explain why. It just, I knew that, you know, I got to all these other ones so quickly or so much quicker. And now this Mm -hmm. last one, no matter what I'm doing, I can't get to it. And it drove me insane. And the part that was bad for me was I became so obsessed with getting to it. Like this was, this was a few years ago when I initially had like my, I guess, more radical transformation with that. And I got down like to a healthy weight, but the way I got there wasn't healthy. I was Mm. killing myself in the gym five days a week, sometimes multiple workouts a day. Uh, I was getting up and running and then going to the gym twice in the day. Like I was doing all kinds of things like that. I wasn't eating enough. I didn't, that's something I didn't even uh, really acknowledge or admit to myself until recently was that. I was at times borderline starving myself to make sure I hit Mm. those goals. And that was just all in this obsessive lead up to to this date, which at the time was uh, my wedding. I didn't want to, I, I was locked in on the thought that I didn't want to look back at those photos and like feel uncomfortable or upset or disgusted with myself. And so I became obsessed until exactly one month before the wedding, I blew out my back. I badly herniated two discs in my back Mm. and I had a doctor suggesting surgery (laughs) and all that up saying like, yeah, you know, even if you do this, odds are you're going to need another surgery within a few years. And I'm like, so I'm about to get married. And now you're saying I'm going to have two back surgeries before I'm 30. Like Mm. that's, that's not appealing. So I got just enough treatment to get me through the wedding, through the honeymoon, And then I basically had to immediately start rehabbing and doing all this physical therapy, but it took me out of the gym and it took me 10 months because I didn't do surgery. I went like physical therapy, cryotherapy, chiropractic visits for 10 months, rebuilding myself. And as, as you know, you hear like, oh, rebuilding, like, oh, you must be like improving. Like, no, no, I was just trying (laughs) to get where I could walk without pain again. And yeah. The problem with that is in 10 months, you can't work out. And I fell back into every bad habit where you flash forward eight months after the wedding and I'm looking at myself and I'm like, did I, did I even lose that way? Like, did I even start? 
And that was like a, a, such a negative spiral for me for a few Mm. years. Like anytime I started to make progress, I'd hit that first roadblock. And then for some reason it was like a mental block. I couldn't get past where I'm like, I don't want to push myself too hard because I saw what happened before. And so I would let that be my excuse to back off of it. And it was just this vicious cycle. So it's a, it's very much one of those things and other challenges, like I said, you kind of realize like, I'm the thing in my way. I'm the thing that even if I'm doing all the right things and working towards it, I'm the one who said like, I'm the one who got sheepish. And then basically yeah. said like, you need to pull back or you need to do this. You don't want to like, oh, you feel a twinge in your back. Stop, completely stop. And maybe yeah. a few days, like it's fine to not push yourself to the point of breaking, obviously. But I got to a point where I think I was using that at working from that place of fear. I was Yes. resisting real change and growth in that regard in progress. Yes. I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that up because when I do work with clients on goal setting, before we even get to the goal or start working on setting the goal, I ask my clients to set their intentions first, their deeper intentions of why they want to do something because it's so easy, myself included, I'm goal driven it's so easy to get caught up in the goal and that end result. Mm -hmm. And really the growth is not in reaching that final result. It's in that process, right? It's in the journey. And whenever we rely on a goal or something outside of ourselves to give us that self-worth or that feeling that we want, Mm -hmm. um, in your case for the wedding, like being confident, you know, feeling good at wedding and your photos, But whenever we rely on an external goal to give us that feeling, we kind of put, give our power away. Right. And so even for me, like I have a goal every month to run as many miles as there are days in the month so that eventually at the end of the year, I can run as many days in the year. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my deeper intention behind that isn't just to run, it's to be healthy, to get, stay in shape. You know, uh, obviously I want to look good, but it's for my overall health. Right. Right. But you have to know there's a fine line between pushing yourself to reach your goals, but then also making sure that you honor your deeper intentions first, no matter what, sometimes you have to pivot your goal. Sometimes you have to change it. So all that to be said with the running, like I've done this for over a year and a half now, and my knees are starting to really hurt. And so actually, as of this week, I've tweaked my goal. I'm doing different things. I may not run every single day now, but I'm, I'm still honoring that intention, which is far Mm -hmm. more important for my health. Like what, what is better for me to change it or the goal? Right. So I love that you have the awareness to realize, okay, like this isn't working. I need to do something that's better, like pivot. Yeah. 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 Uh, For me, it, what I what I would say in the last few months, like I said, I, I realized I was kind of the thing in my way in that regard. And yeah. that the the things that I initially pointed out to, like as far as my schedule, like oh well, my schedule's insane. You know, I'm I'm juggling a full time job, full time school. I was last semester when I initially had this breakthrough, uh, also doing a part time professional internship, which was like another ten to fifteen hours a week, and then I had a new baby at home. So yeah, I was looking at just everything I had going on. Not to mention even trying to do any of my my personal business stuff with like Dallas Prospect and these other little offshoots that I do now, including this podcast. Yeah, it, it's like I, I felt like all these things were challenges but I was viewing it from a standpoint of, well, how am I supposed to get any of this done? How am I supposed to manage this? And I finally kind of had to realize like the problem isn't the problem. The problem is my reaction to the problem, the Mm. way that I'm approaching it. Like these are challenges. Yes. They're obstacles, but I can navigate these. I have navigated these. I've been navigating these. And I just have to, like you said, adjust kind of the way I'm going about things, maybe adjust the goal, maybe adjust in a day-to-day or week-to-week kind of approach. But I can make all these things work. Now, I'm still going yeah. to be exhausted getting through the rest of that, <laughs> yeah. but I, it's doable. And even though that happened, that, that kind of realization came about at the very end of the semester, I, at a time that I should have been just absolutely like beaten down and broken down as far as my mental health and everything. And this is comparing it to like, you know, previous semesters, the end of those, 
going into like this yearly cabin retreat trip I do usually I'm like limping to the finish line as far as my mental health yeah. if I do like a, a sign-off video for before I go on a week vacation on my channel I can go back and show you like the two previous years and you can see it on my face you can hear it in my voice I am beaten down I've got nothing left but then this past one I even noticed it as I was talking about it I was you know as I was recording the video I was like you know, all things considered, like I need the trip. Yes. But like, I don't, I don't feel in nearly the negative mindset or mental space that I've been occupying this time previous years. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was interesting. And I even remember kind of saying like, you know, it's, I, I have that, I, I can feel that fire still burning inside. And I feel like it's in spite of everything, it feels like it's burning brighter than it ever has. Mm -hmm. And so that was going into the trip and I hadn't even like figured out any kind of practices or uh, kind of, for lack of a better term, daily rituals to take on to kind of improve that further. But I went into the trip and I basically was like, all right, two years ago, I had this like really enlightening experience that completely like changed my mindset. Like I, I was in a really bad place two years ago mentally and I had the trip and that was like such clarity for me and really helped me kind of map out the next couple of years of my journey and everything. And then the following year, I couldn't replicate it and I couldn't figure out why. And I put, I realized now I put the significance, the kind of, as you said, power of it in the original location. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm. give it to myself. I put it in the place that I was. And so this last wow. year, this last January, I made sure we went back, well, not to the yeah. same exact cabin, but the same area, like within 10 minutes of the other cabin. And uh, I got there and it wasn't like it wasn't everything that the first one had been either. And I realized that within minutes of getting there. And I realized like, you know, I, I came to an immediate crossroads like, all right, I can sulk on this. I can say like, this is the one thing I needed in the year. <laughs> and I can't even get it. This sucks. What am I going to do? And I was like, I don't, I don't want to do that because I know I can get enough of whatever I need here. And so yeah. like that tweak in my approach, plus, you know, uh, Sean had put so much effort in like planning the trip, researching it and all that. And, you know, she had the same disappointments, like the cabin wasn't nearly as isolated and remote as the previous one had been. And that was just something we didn't know until we got there. Um, and so that, that was a little bit frustrating. And then the area was also a lot more busy this time around than it was two years ago where, I mean, we really were just isolated, like miles apart from the nearest neighbor. And I was like, well, I could sulk on that. I could lament the fact that I don't have that, or I can try to make the most of it. And I, I went in with the goal of like, whatever I do however I connect back to that kind of mindset and clarity I had two years ago I'm going to make sure that I can bring it back with me because mm, it's, it's it. not I can't just do this once a year and hope that everything goes right like during that few days span a few days to a week that I have there I have to make sure I can bring that with me and actually do something with it throughout you know it, it, at least weekly and yeah then I didn't know it at the time I came to find that even two years ago what I had been doing was meditating and yeah it's essentially what I was doing it was just the clarity it was just trying to if my thoughts wandered I brought them back uh kind yeah. of to myself okay. and I just tried to be as still and calm as I could until eventually it was like the garbled mess of my mind just kind of straightened out I felt like the shift into that set and then I was like okay. Like, I think I even remember, like, I, I'd been sitting out on like the back deck for like an hour and a half in just perfect silence. And I, I felt that shift. And I remember kind of mm. thinking, like, okay, well, let's, uh, let's talk with ourselves. Let's have a conversation. And like the rest of it was internal, but for whatever reason, yeah. I remember saying that part out loud, but there wasn't resistance to anything I was saying. Sometimes yeah. the cycle I had gotten in was, I would say like, well, I want to do this. Yeah, but you're not good enough. There'd always be that quick negative voice on the back end of it, you know, kind of cutting my feet out from under me before I even like took that first step. Or if I even thought to take that step, it was like, mm, hold back, buddy. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I was trying to find that. And 
once I realized, oh, well, this is just meditation. Well, I can do that anywhere. I can do that mm-hmm. anytime. Like it, it doesn't matter. So like that completely transformed that. And now it's become a thing where it's just, it's an automatic daily thing. I even do it sometimes two or three times a day, depending on how stressful it is. And that's just been completely transformative for me as far as like uh, my mental health. Like it, it's, it's weird. I, I don't know how to exactly explain it other than I feel like a calmer sense of clarity I feel like I have more patience in situations where even if I'm having, you know, like a not, I don't know if argument's the right word. If I'm having a a disagreement of some kind, whereas I might feel the impulse to, to argue back or to say something like that. Instead, I'm kind of like, all right, well, hold on. Let's, let's think about this. What, what is probably the root of this? What's the other perspective in this? And then like, just in that, it's like, oh, okay. And now like, I avoid, you know, having, <laughs> having that argument, <laughs> like, ah, oh, I, I should have, I shouldn't have gone about it that way or something like that. Like it's, it's just this general calmness and clarity and it makes other things easier. It's like that stress and anxiety that had plagued me my entire life. Yeah. Is like suddenly like it's there, but it's so much quieter now because I'm not really paying attention to it. I notice it's there. And then I'm kind of like, all right, cool. Well, um, I hear you, but I'm not worried about what you're going to say. I'm going to give the megaphone to this guy over here. He's a lot more positive. And yes. That, that just works. And so like without stress and anxiety screaming in my ear and shouting down everything I do, it's in itself just allowed my confidence to grow. I used to go from soaring ambition to crippling doubt in the span of yeah. like a minute. And now I don't have that swing back towards crippling doubt. And so like, I've noticed like this major increase and growing confidence and like that soaring ambition just seems like that's all there is to it. And it's, it's radically different how much my mindset has changed in just the span of like three months. But even I was noticing it even a couple weeks after, like once I realized I had brought back that feeling with me and was really tapping into it essentially every day, it was just completely, I guess, life-changing for me. That, yeah. that, that's always cheesy to say, but it, that's how it feels. Yeah, absolutely. The, the power is in everyone's hands, right? Mm. And so it goes back to that ownership, knowing that like you have the power to choose the thoughts. You have the power to be aware of your thoughts. I mean, awareness, like what you said earlier, is one of the most important transformational thing that you can do because whenever you become aware of your thoughts you create space between who you really are and your mind right and so Mm -hmm. that space is what gives us clarity and peace it gives us creativity right where we we're not just so caught up in our mind we actually let things flow through us in an organic natural way and then again Mm -hmm. just having that peace and trust underneath your thoughts and then it helps you to move forward what you can your mind is a beautiful tool you can use your mind in a great way just as long as you're still in control of it at the end of the day yeah what was uh so like I mentioned for me kind of getting to the end of that what I've deemed my semester from hell what Mm -hmm. what was a a turning point I guess for you you had mentioned like you know, being younger and reading like the self-help books and or self-improvement books rather that your, Mm -hmm. that your dad had kind of handed down to you. Was there like a a kind of turning point where you took that same sort of ownership that you were talking about? Yeah. So it's, it's all been, of course, it's all a process, right? Always, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a process for me, but actually, honestly, the biggest turning point in my life was actually when I was going through my holistic training, my life coach training, which was Mm -hmm. You know, again, just three years ago, two and a half years ago. And I remember standing in front of everyone in my class and um, my, the teacher, his name is Alan Cohen. He's actually a very well-known author in the self-development world. And um, it dawned on me that even up until that point, like, yeah, I, I remember I said I was shy. And even when I was reading self-development books and stuff like that, I was trying to change myself. I had resistance on, on my shyness and it just clicked when I was there that, you know what, why 
is being shy such a bad thing? The problem wasn't my shyness because I was just, I'm an introvert. I'm initially Mm -hmm. takes me a while to warm up to people. That wasn't the problem. It was my resistance around that quality of, of who I was. I just, I am a little bit more shy than other people. And I realized that resistance towards things. And like you said, that resistance towards your thoughts and stuff like that, that was what was getting me in in trouble. That's where I had so much struggle and anxiety and, and grief around that is thinking I was defective when really I wasn't. Shyness is actually, I now see it as it's, it's sweet. It's cute. You know, it actually, there's a lot to be said about maybe listening more, more than just talking and blurting out things to, to people. And um, in that moment of deciding to drop that resistance of who I was made me fully come into acceptance of who I was. And yeah. with that, then I was, okay, I still, I love personal development. I always want to grow and work on myself, but not so much change myself anymore, just strengthen areas. But I, once you can accept fully who you are, flaws and all Mm -hmm. in your life changes. And, and actually, ironically, as a result, I'm not even that shy anymore. That just kind of naturally left. Um, just because again, I, take me or leave me, you know, I, I really have nothing to really fear with other people anymore. And that was such a liberating life-changing moment for me. Yeah. Yeah. I I can imagine. I I think before, and and I've kind of talked about this a little bit recently, like I, I always resisted the idea that I had previously hated myself. And I think part of that is because even, even as insecure as I might've been, even as lacking in confidence as I might have been throughout the years, I always felt that I had potential in me. Yeah. And I I clung to that idea. And at times I was even afraid of like, you know, what if this potential that I'm the thing that I'm hanging on to, what if I'm wrong and it's not actually, you know, what it what if it's not real potential and it's just this lie that I tell myself. Mm. And, you know, what do I have then? Like that was that was a fear for me. But generally I always held to that belief that I had this potential and I worried that I wouldn't be able to live up to it, that I wouldn't be able Mm. to unlock it or access it. And I would be the guy that had a million ideas and never saw any of them through. And that always really bothered me that I would just kind Mm. of like float aimlessly. Like I feel like I, I did for a good while you know not really satisfied with my career or anything it's just a paycheck for me and not feeling like I'm exploring or doing anything with my passions that really Mm -hmm. really bothered me and so I think that's where a lot of my dislike for myself and even hate at times that I resentment there you go there's a good word resentment that I developed against myself made you know it, it exacerbated the situation because it took what was already negative feelings. And then it turned it instead of having a little bit of that um, compassion for myself, it it turned it into, I was my enemy. And that's, like I said, that, that was the realizing like I'm what's in my way. I'm the one that's, you know, beating myself over the head with every insecurity, every past failure. I'm lamenting things that, you know, that are so far in the past, there's no point in lamenting it. Like it's, you know, you're, that's the whole thing. Like your history is not your destiny. And yeah. so I, I had to kind of come to terms with that and move forward. And what I tried to do after I, I like I said, I got back from uh, the, the cabin trip and I had kind of implemented in essentially meditation into my daily life, essentially. And I was like, you know, this has been such a, a positive change for me what are other things I can do to it? Like, I didn't really go searching for like self-improvement. I was just looking for something to just get out of my own head and basically allow me to not just feel like a ball of nerves at all time. Yeah. At all times. And, um, you know, as I kind of looked into these other things that I could do, it, it really started to compound. I was like, well, this is like, at the time I was doing meditation, like 15 minutes a day, I was like, this is 15 minutes a day. And it's been so positive for me. What are other things I can add to it? 
And that just kind of started this whole process of like, well, here, let's try this. Let's get this into the mix. And then it just kind of built out from there to the point where if I had like a kind of holy trinity of daily rituals that I do every day, and these are like the first things I do in the morning after Sean and Harper are out of the house is all, I'll do uh, dynamic resistance yoga, which has been really good for me because again it allows me to work around my back which was always mm -hmm. my biggest hurdle as far as getting back into shape uh then I'll meditate immediately after that and then I'll journal and journaling was something that Love I was it. doing at the cabin anyway like after I would you know kind of meditate out there really just sit out in the peace and calm and let my mind clear I would come in and I would kind of jot down my thoughts or my goals moving forward that I kind of settled on while I was out there and so I was like, well, I was already doing that there. Let me just bring the practice back here. And initially yeah. I started out writing that on like my laptop or even, uh, I went initially from my laptop to one of my typewriters. And I remember, and I can't remember the study, but there was some study basically saying that if you take your notes by hand, instead of typing them up, you remember them better. And the study basically yes. looked at students in a college class, ones who took notes by hand, ones who took them on their laptop, and the ones who took them by hand did it better. And there's something about the level of effort that goes mm -hmm. into it. And it, I think it's just because like, obviously the, the stroke of a pen for every individual letter is unique or largely yes. versus striking a key. Yeah, your finger might be moving to a different place, but it's the same motion essentially. Mm -hmm. And so, and not only that, if you're like me, I type like a mile a minute. So me too. Yeah. I can, I can, through, you know, I can transcribe an interview really great, really quickly, but I'm not necessarily processing it. I'm kind of following yeah. the string of words and just flying through it. Whereas if you're writing by hand, you have to take a moment, you know, it's a little bit of a slower process. And so it forces you to kind of either pick out just the main important information or just kind of follow along and keep in line with that train of thought. So I started doing that, keeping an actual journal and I actually have like three now. I do too. Uh, I have like so many things. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got one that's just like my personal journal and that's just like yeah. general thoughts and whatever of the day. Then I have what I call my true North, which is like my, my sort of um, game plan or whatever in that regard, oh, as far that. as like, you know, my business could be creative and everything like that, that I'm wanting to do. It's more like it's not longer form entries. It's like more actionable. Like this is what I'm going to do. This is my approach. And I, I just kind of like, uh, I don't just think it, I ink it. Like that's, yes, that's a quick I love way to that. think about it. And uh, then I have another one. that's just like a pocket journal. That's just like my, I call it create. Cause for me, create is like, if there's like one phrase, obviously it's in the title of the podcast. If there's like one powerful word I cling to it's create, which, you know, me it's too. not just the root of creative, but it's like a form of expression. It's, it's to me like a, a fearless um, form of expe expression and creativity, which is what I yeah. aspire to do in everything. Cause I've always been more driven by things I'm passionate about rather than like, Oh, what's something I can do that'll make money. Like I, I really it, don't. Yeah. Care. So I'm the same way. I'm, I, I love how that that's like the last piece, like we're talking about mindset and, you know, mm -hmm. the internal, transformation but it's so important to like you said get a routine to fill your day doing things that set you up for success that yeah. charge you that energize you and it's like what you said like one thing I do my I'm not in a, a natural morning person but my best ideas flow in the morning so I always write even if it's like 30 minutes I make sure I set some time aside in the mornings and write and then you know, I'm a runner, so I like to run. I won't mm -hmm. always be running now. I'll be doing like cycling and stuff like that, but um, just get your, getting your body moving. And that's kind of my form of meditation as well. And just filling your day, especially your morning with things that set your day up for success. Even like so cliche, I actually just started this this year, but I make my bed every single morning, right? After I write, I make my bed to just makes you feel productive and it's all about getting that momentum going mm -hmm. right so when you start those things even those small things lead to big things later on in your day your week or whatever it's just powerful routines powerful habits and they change your life yeah 
Yeah, for me, I, I, I was never a morning person and that kind of got changed mm-hmm. by two things. One, obviously having a child, you don't have that <laughs> say anymore. Like you, you get up when she gets up, doesn't matter if it's 45 minutes, an hour or whatever before the alarm even, like you're up, she's yeah. up, you're, you're just dealing with it. Yeah. Uh, but then the other thing, I think the, the routine and for me, the, the dynamic resistance yoga really helped a lot too because, and that's why I like to start with that one because- mm-hmm. It, it wakes your body up. It gets, like you said, blood flowing and everything. And then like used to, I, I carried a grogginess with me half the morning, at least yeah. no matter how much coffee I had or whatever. Like I just, I was felt like I was uh zombie esque walking through yeah. my mornings. And then it was sometime around like 10 or 10 30 when my mind would really boot up. And I was just like, God, I, I feel like I'm losing, like my time is more strapped than ever. I can't lose this much time in my day. And yeah. so taking that on, you know, they're out of the house by eight o'clock. Usually Sean headed to work and she drops Harper off at uh, her grandparents on the way. And I'm immediately like, I, I've one thing I've kind of been toying with and it's been working for me is uh, intermittent fasting is how I've started uh, the morning. So like, you know, I'll have dinner the night before and then it's like basically 16 hours until your next mm-hmm. meal. So I will make the coffee in the morning, deal with the dogs and all that while Sean gets Harper ready. And then I'll make Sean's coffee. She'll head out and I'll usually drink my first cup of coffee, just black. And I'm not even like a fan of coffee black like that, Yeah. but, um, something to get me just a little bit of caffeine without adding like anything in the way of like calories or anything. And then I'll go do the, the routine and then I'll actually sit down and have like a, a cup of co- a cup of coffee, how I want to make it with a, a little yeah. bit of sugar and cream. And uh, then, you know, usually by like 11 at that point, I'll have like a, a breakfast smoothie or something I've started doing recently, like a peanut butter banana smoothie. That's awesome. And that's another thing that's like, it's like 300 or 350 calories. And yet it easily will carry me for a while where like, yes. I mean, I, I've had days where I ended up being so busy throughout the rest of the day. I realized like, did I had like a <laughs> snack mid afternoon, but like, what did I do? So I'm like, it makes it really easy to like stay on top of like a, a daily calorie intake kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, especially with the, the dynamic resistance yoga, you've like already added a few hundred calories into like your like allowance in that regard. And so like, it's gotten to a point where it's just easy for me to manage that. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's one of those things that, like I said, I didn't set out trying to do. I just kind of realized I was doing it. And then I was like, all right, well, we'll just lean into it a little bit. And, uh, the, the difference I would say in that versus previously, when I said I was kind of like starving myself is I'm not starving myself. I'm not missing any meals. Yeah, like I'm yeah. still having breakfast. It's just a little bit later in the morning after I've done a little bit of exercise and then like, I still have lunch almost every day. There's only a couple times where I've just like yeah. faced it essentially. And then I, I eat basically my regular dinner, like whatever I would want to do. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it works, it works in that regard. Like it feels easy because I'm staying in line with this other thing and getting through all the stuff feel like you said, productive and just fully awake and alert and ready to begin the day. It makes all the difference in the world as far as my productivity the rest of the day, like compared to just how it was like a few months ago. Yeah, I love that. Deep, deep down, we all know what's best for our body, what's best for our life. It's that awareness, that consciousness, that conscious when you're eating, when you're doing anything, just you, you can tune in and know what's right for your body. What's good. This is in eating again and anything and setting Mm -hmm. your schedule you know, so if you bring that awareness, we're all very wise when we can tune into that. So when you bring that awareness and consciousness into any everything that you do, so many people are just go through the motions and, you know, again, like with you, like get caught up with um, so many busy things and they just, they kind of fall victim, victim to their external situations. But really, again, just bringing that power back, realizing that you can control and do what, what you need to do in your life, Yeah, taking responsibility and then doing what really is right. Being in, integral with your word. It's just a very powerful practice. And it's with you, I know you said do it. You started this routine like three months ago, but it's almost an addictive process. Once you get started, like once sure. you get on that train of self-development of doing good things, 
you realize because it's it, you realize how good you feel when you do it. You realize mm-hmm. how how things work when you really are at your optimal, you know, daily routine and everything. Yeah. And so it's it's a very addictive process. So like I always encourage people when they come to me and they're stuck, like how you felt, um, you know two years ago, but you know, intermittently, mm-hmm. like when you feel stuck, it's all about just starting momentum and even just baby steps. Like you said, doing yoga or just 15 minutes of meditation. You don't have to go and take a sabbatical and do crazy things. You just right. have to start small and get that momentum going. It's like pushing a ball down a hill. You just got to get that little push and then it'll just create momentum, yeah. create speed. Yeah. No, oh, absolutely. And, you know, like I said, I, I have that kind of Holy Trinity three item thing that I do every day. If I had a fourth Love item, that. I would say reading. I've really tried to kind of implement that back into the daily flow. And I always like to read a couple books at a time. It's always like one that's fiction yeah. because I am also a writer. And so I like to kind of keep the creative energy like that uh, flowing as much as I can, even though writing while it in itself is one of my items. If I extend my list out to like six items, it's on there. Yeah. Right now, it's the one that I struggle with. Uh, a little bit keeping on top of just because of how filled my schedule is right now. Maybe once school falls back off the plate a little bit, I'll be Mm -hmm. able to get back into that flow. But uh, reading, writing and generals, you know, I I say again, create just something creative. Yeah, that could be just content creation. That could be me doing like a Dallas prospect video or something like that. That could be like this, the podcast here, like it's just something creative. It could be me going out and doing something photography based just on my own. Like I want to go try and take photos of this thing at night and try and catch some kind of cool reflection off like a rainwater puddle you know like whatever yeah like it's, it's just something like that maybe it's something cool maybe it's something that I'm just like ah, I didn't really turn out like I thought but I made the effort so it counts and to stay on top of that while also trying to be I, I think more gentle with myself I've I, I and I'm not the first one to do it I actually think uh I, I think uh it was Matt Diavella who's like a YouTuber that does a lot of self-improvement self-development stuff um I recently discovered him and I saw that like what I was already doing, he had done a video on like a year ago. And so I'm like, Mm -hmm. damn it, there goes my copyright (laughs) or trademark or whatever. But uh, what he calls it is the two day rule. And that is the uh, basically saying like the the previous school of thought that I always tried to adhere to was, and again, I don't know if this is who created it, but uh, Jerry Seinfeld had this idea that was like, don't break the chain. So like if you Mm -hmm. uh, write every day, you mark an X on the calendar for every day you write and you build a chain, you don't want to break it. Well, that mm-hmm. was too stringent for me because there were times yeah. when I would, you know, I'd, I'd build a chain of two full weeks, three full weeks, whatever. And then life would get crazy and I'd have a couple of days yeah. where I just didn't get to it. And it would be intimidating to start over because it's like, oh, I, I had the long chain going and now I got to yeah, I was like, I need to stop focusing on, on that. And so the two day rule basically says like, I have these things I want to do every day. It might be workout. It might be meditate journal, whatever two day rule. I, if I didn't do it today, I do it tomorrow. Basically. Like I, I, I make sure I never miss two consecutive days. So for me, I literally just have it on the whiteboard, like the six items I want to do every day that I do them. I put a check by them. Or if I didn't do them, I put an X end of the day I erase the checks I leave the x's so I know those need to be my priorities for the following day and I don't care about like oh what's the streak at what's the chain like a lot of days I will clear them all and that's great yeah I don't I don't commit that to a long chain because I don't want to get in my own head about like oh it's been 13 consecutive days that I've written or that I've you know done something creative oh I haven't done it yet and like feel that kind of anxiety because I think that sort yeah. of sets yourself up to fail a little bit. And so I'm just like, look, all I care about is a, a day-to-day, like small window, you know, expanded out to two days if it's talking about something I didn't do before and it'll take care of itself, you know? And I've had a lot of success with that so far. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about. Cause again, it's like you said, like if you start doing it, okay, I must do this every day. It puts the pressure on that outward external goal mm-hmm. you're not just doing it to do it you're doing it for your health and stuff like that and I love the two-day rule that's also powerful like with nutrition and with exercise is you know and when I set my running goals for you know I have to run as many days as there are in a month I didn't say I have to run every single day mm-hmm. because life gets in the way yeah and again it's not about 
doing it every day, but when you can, like having the grace for when things get busy and, but holding yourself accountable still. So sure. like if I am busy and I can't run today, I'm going to run two miles the next day and make up for it. Yep. It's just, and, and, and honoring that deeper intention, right? Again, mm-hmm. not like stressing out, oh, I didn't do this today. Like honoring your intention is going to serve you tomorrow and just keep it going. For sure. So what are, uh, what are some basic things you would say that you typically target with, uh, with people that you work with, like stress, anxiety, things, you know, just things that are typical and that people can have standard actionable, like intentions yeah. for. Yeah. So, and we've covered quite a bit of sure. what I work, work with clients on. And again, number one, just taking that ownership. Like you are not a victim to your circumstances. Like, yes, you can't control the weather or traffic, but you can always control how you want to respond to a situation. So that brings that power back first and foremost with anything. Mm -hmm. And then number two is that awareness that we spoke about. Um, You know, a lot of us will have limiting beliefs or a lot of us will have anxiety. And so when you just pause you don't identify with your thoughts you just become aware of your thoughts you give space between you and your mind and it allows you to kind of sit back and just observe it you don't identify with it and so with that you know again you whenever we stress whenever we're in anxiety in an anxiety mode it's because of fear that you're in a Mm -hmm. place of fear so then once you can be aware of that then you flip the voice. You you ask, okay, well, what is this voice of, of stress, anxiety saying? Well, maybe it's I'm not enough or I'm going to fail or this and that. And then I walk my clients and say, okay, let's flip it now. What would a voice of trust and love say? What That is our natural voice. Right. We're not here to struggle. And so then they say, well, you know, um, maybe it's, you know, I'm doing the best I can. It's, it's all going to sort itself out. And then pay attention to your energy, your energy shift. When you speak those words over your life, over Mm -hmm. like choose those positive things. And then when you, you will inevitably always feel lighter and better, more at ease, like you say with your thoughts. And then you choose to focus on those. It's not to say that you won't ever have other thoughts pop up or anything like that. But again, it's, it's awareness and then choosing to move forward with that. Yeah. Um, And then again, you know, just trusting that all things happen for your highest good, like all things are in your life. You can either learn from, grow from, there's always something that's going to take you to that next level, just circles back to that ownership thing, realizing that you like we with the cabin. Okay. I can either, um, you know, sulk, or I can enjoy this, use this for an opportunity to still be with myself, still be positive and then Mm -hmm. move forward. Yeah. And then last but not least, again, just the, um, then the tangible, the developing your day, developing your time, that ownership over your time, your schedule, you can choose how you need to navigate your day. I mean, of course we have jobs, we have, you know, commitments, but can you wake up earlier? Can you do certain things? What can you fit that fill your cup, so to speak, so that you can operate from a full cup, you can do things that set yourself up for success. So it's focusing inward while doing the external outward steps. And it's a process being kind to yourself in the, in the process of it all. Yeah. It it definitely takes time to, to master it. It wasn't something that even when I got back, I just immediately like shifted into it It was kind of something that I had to build on for even a couple weeks before I really really was like oh okay yeah this feels way better and I'm actually sustaining this this is really cool so yeah it's it's very interesting and you know for anyone interested in going further down that road or you know trying to improve things like that or deal with stress and anxiety I'll drop Lindy's info in the description check that out. That's definitely someone that you can reach out to for help and guidance on that. She's definitely helped me as well in the past. So definitely, uh, definitely worth looking into because your, your own mental health and well being is it's not negotiable. Like you have to have it. it. It's one of those things where it's like, if you don't take care of it, you're going to pay for it later. And that was something that I had to also learn the hard way years of 
kind of trying to put on the mask and just go about business. Yeah. Eventually the mask cracks and it starts to slip and then, you know, people can kind of see when something's wrong. So yeah. take care of it, yeah. take care of yourselves. But uh, yeah. Well, Lindy, uh, I think that pretty much covers it for the time. I really appreciate you coming on. It was a very engaging conversation, very important conversation that I think needs to be had. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm all about talk. These, these conversations are what I live for. So mm -hmm. I, I'm always up for it. I'm honored to, to be speaking with you about it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. But yeah, so guys, if you haven't already for the fact that this will post on YouTube somewhere at some point, I'm sure uh, I'll just talk to you there. Like the video, drop a comment, subscribe. Again, I'll have Lindy's info in the description there as well. But uh, until next time, guys, that's our time. Appreciate it.